Thank you, Maurizio, especially for the safety. I don't know if you heard about the taxi that exploded in Shenzhen two days ago because it was hit by another car, so I think that is quite relevant. Now, 120 years ago in New York, there was a conference on mobility and the delegates ran away of the conference in despair because at the time the main mean of mobility were horses and they projected that thanks to the economic growth, uh, New York would be covered by six meters of horse manure in, uh, in a matter of uh, 30 to 40 years. And then some, an invention came along, the internal combustion engine that changed that paradigm. So I'm happy to invite Eric van den Bulk, that is an expert of combustion, to say a few words about uh, that technology still. Thank you. I don't think this works. Uh, I'm sorry? It's for recording, for recording the videos. Oh, OK. Yeah. OK. Um, well, the selected measures that I will uh, talk about um, are just a perception of what I experience as a mechanical engineer in uh, energy related technologies hmm, uh, of my environment. And uh, this recently came out hmm, um, that uh, <coughs> the motivations that uh, people have for cars, it was in the United States where uh, it, it's a little bit different there than here in Europe. But uh, uh, fuel saving technology and lower fuel costs are definitely uh, important in making a choice, which is also related to uh, economy. And I think uh, um, there has been an evolution in uh, what uh, um, drives people in purchasing a car. Hmm? And it's going the right direction, fortunately. So here's my uh, first uh, measure. Um, I think uh, um, the argument that I hear in uh, electric vehicles is about CO2. And I just think CO2 is the wrong emphasis. I'm sorry to say it's, uh, it comes out of the European Union. Hmm? Government officials don't know any better and take it over. And all you hear is about CO2. Hmm? China is uh, um, starting up a big one megawatt a coal-fired plant every two weeks. Hmm? So whatever we do, it's peanuts. But that doesn't mean that uh, what wants to be achieved is wrong. Hmm? No. But I think the emphasis should be different. For instance, in the United States, it's all about lowering dependency on oil. Hmm? And that's the big uh, issue in the United States. And uh, recently, uh, the British government um, had a plan to uh, um, lower the energy use in their government buildings. They didn't use the CO2 argument. What they used was uh, saving money by saving energy and using that money to do other good things for the community. And it was a big success. So I think um, 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 using different emphases, uh, emphases um, different arguments, but please forget about that uh, CO2, hmm? um, is uh, what's needed in this uh, discussion. Hmm? And electric cars can save uh, fuel, can save energy, and I think that should be much more emphasized rather than uh, saving CO2. So I think communication is a big uh, issue towards uh, people. Then, um, clean cities. I think uh, there's a lot of uh, consensus that uh, um, electric cars are the number one uh, choice for uh, cities. Congratulations for the Brother Brussels city, because they uh, purchased uh, 30 electric cars. I think electric cars should be introduced by city councils with uh, taxpayers' money in cooperation with trend-setting companies. Fortunately, in Flanders, we have one, for as I know, which is a Colrad company. Maybe there are others, but uh, um, there are some companies who want to move forward. Um, and they can make a difference. They can do that with their own money. Electric cars are definitely associated with renewable ele electricity, and that's good news because new technologies are going to come out. 
certainly for this part of Europe, where photovoltaic cells will come back, hmm, fortunately, with uh, good technology, affordable te um, prices. Hmm. But if you want to start the electric car, it's a little bit different, and uh, it's going to require budget choices on a communal level, on a very low level, city levels. And I checked, uh, there's upcoming uh, local elections in uh, Belgium hmm, for cities, and I checked uh, the internet uh, for uh, the plans of uh, political parties, and there's, for as much as I know, not a single political party that has an action plan for cleaner cities. Anno 2012, I cannot believe it, but not even the Green Party in, uh, in Flanders has an action plan for cleaner cities with cars. The reason why is of course very clear. Huh? That takes a, a budget choice um, and it, it really brings down the discussion to where is the money going to come from. And I think there's money enough with cities. They get enough here in Belgium. They earn a lot of money by selling electricity. That money is there. But I think uh, working on political parties is definitely something that could be done eh, to bring that up in their political plan before the election. And then the, um, the third uh, measure action plan that I would uh, suggest is make allies, make friends. Um, Electric cars should be introduced or looked upon as part of the solution. I think in Europe, it, it's, I've seen communications coming out of Europe where they say it's the only solution. There's academic people in Flanders who say the future is 100% electricity. There's politicians who believe that. Hmm? Fortunately, there's other people. The United States doesn't believe that. Hmm? Germany for as much as I know, doesn't believe that. Hmm? There's other solutions, and I think personally that electric cars should go together with vehicles on natural gas. Hmm? Uh, that may seem strange, but uh, both achieve the same goal. They save CO2, hmm? they uh, are much better for the environment as current vehicles on fossil fuels, on liquid fuels. Hmm? Renewable methane is on the horizon that's going to come. That technology is already there and being created. Yeah? That you can start even on a household level. I think that's going to be a really paradigm shift yeah? on technology that's going to um, use other different energy vectors. But most scenarios, natural gas is going to be there. Otherwise, it's going to be electricity with a lot of nuclear power plants. And who on earth wants that? So um, I think, personally, I think um, that if you um, would create a, uh, a plan for cities, for instance, okay, how to go about becoming greener, but give the city options. I mean, um, if you go together with uh, the vehicles on natural gas, you get a big partner, hmm? because natural gas is a lot of big companies. They're interested, too, in uh, um, cleaner vehicles. Hmm? And for now, electric vehicles will just take their place, and uh, how, much, how many of them will be sold will Partially the burden by economics and um, um, other factors, local factors. But I think it, you have a lot more power if you go together and make uh, the right allies. Um, the second argument is if I look at the um, emission regulations, it's really a success story. Hmm? Congratulations for the United Nations and for Europe. Um, but it has been uh, a, a big um, uh, success story. And what happened was that the, the, one of the reasons why that was a big, uh, big success is that heavyweight cars, expensive cars, paid for the development of new technologies. 
and lightweight cars profited. So maybe go for the right uh, car. The Tesla, well, the Tesla's approach makes a lot of sense to me, I think. Uh, variable number of battery packs, you can choose as a consumer how many batteries you want. The price range, it's about, well, their newest vehicles are about 50,000 euros. I definitely think there should be no subsidies for electric vehicles. Research, okay, but no subsidies. Uh, that uh, um, it, It's just counterproductive. And it, uh, the, all the subsidies for photovoltaic panels has shown that it's counterproductive. And if possible, be more disruptive. Hmm? Um, try to the, the, there's a lot of uh, things that you can do. The lightweight uh, program of uh, Europe here uh, is a very good thing. I think there's a lot to be gained by that. There's a lot of uh, new materials, smart glass, hmm? um, eco controls of vehicles. Um, we've been working a lot on uh, um, eco control algorithms for driving, but human factor based. If you know pe how people drive and then try to uh, incorporate eco controls you can extend your battery your range by 10 15 percent maybe um, and uh, still be acceptable so thank you for your attention and, uh, 10 minutes okay thank you Eric for making a lot of controversial statements that I hope will animate the debate afterwards. Um, I now want to ask Marcel, um, you know that when uh, there was that problem of the horses, uh, the, the first invention was actually an electric car. Uh, the electric car was invented before the internal combustion engine, only because the battery range was so short, it was quickly replaced by the uh, uh, internal combustion engine. So now, actually, the electric car is a comeback, and that comeback is powered by the new available technologies for battery. So it's very good to have Marcel here from Umicore that is going to talk a bit about battery development. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, two of the major concerns which have been mentioned <coughs> by the students were battery risk and battery cost. And those are just the two items that I'm going to address uh, in this short presentation. A little bit technical and uh, excuse me for that. What are batteries? Uh, it all started uh, for electric vehicles uh, with nickel metal hydride batteries. And uh, we can honestly say that that period is over. All the new models which have been launched or which are launched for the moment are lithium ion based. Lithium ion battery is a 3.6 volt battery. And that's what we use today. <coughs> Shortly, we will expect new types of lithium-ion batteries. Uh, better ones, we call that advanced batteries. I will show you how that, that will be done. And those probably will have higher uh, voltages. But once we will reach the limits of the lithium-ion chemistry, and that will be around maybe 300, 350 watt hour per kilogram, where the present one is at 160 watt hour per kilogram. Once the limits of the lithium ion chemistry reached, there will come new battery systems. But honestly, not in the first 10, 20 years, when we talk about metal air batteries, when we talk about sulfur based batteries, etc., that's not going to be before 2025 commercially, even 2030. So it is lithium ion and it will stay lithium ion for a long while. What is such a battery? <coughs> it is it can exist in different formats. It can be cylindrical, it can be prismatic, it can be pouch. And in each battery you have two main components. <coughs> An anode where you oxidize the material and a cathode where you reduce the material. In a lithium ion battery, that anode is a graphite-based material, presently. 
And the uh, cathode material is a lithium compound. It's not lithium metal, so it's better for safety. It is a kind of lithium metal oxide or phosphate-based material. That's the kind of materials that we make at Humicore. In between, you have a controlling agent, and that's the separator. And the separator steers. It's a membrane. It steers the reaction. Those two electrodes are embedded in an electrolyte. And for all lithium cells, this is organic. Organic electrolyte, a little bit less good for safety than in an aqueous battery system. Why do we call it lithium ion? Because it is based on an ion transport. It is a shuttling reaction, and ions go reversibly from cathode to anode and come back. It's also called rocking chair. So what can we expect? How to go to the 350 uh, watt hour per kilogram? How to double the capacity of the battery? This is done at both uh, major components. At the cathode level, it all started in 92 with lithium cobalt oxide. Now, cobalt is a relatively rare material. There is only 60,000 tons produced. This is not a, mat a material that can be used for cost reasons and for existency, abundance, uh, <coughs> scarcity in automotive applications. So progressively, that cobalt has been substituted by other elements like nickel, manganese, mixtures of all those compounds. And that's the family that we call NMC-type materials. NMC-type material is the most widely used material in present lithium-ion batteries. But there is more. Other customers prefer other compositions, other compounds. There is a nickel cobalt aluminum based system, there are, there are manganese based systems, there is even lithium iron phosphate. All those batteries are characterized that we charge them up to about 4.2 volts. Where can we expect uh, breakthroughs? By charging higher than the 4.2 volts, and that is the family uh, of 5 volt type batteries which are currently in development. 5 volt needs new materials, needs new cathode materials, but especially needs new electrolytes. Because the present electrolytes are not stable at those 5 volt levels, so there is a lot of work ongoing on new electrolyte compositions. Iron liquids, uh, solid polymers, etc. It does not make sense if you improve one electrode and you don't work on the other one at the same time. So an improved cathode material can only live, can only work if you add an improved anode material. Present graphite is around 370 milliampere hour per gram. There exist now in development phase, and we also do that, materials that can go higher. 10 times higher in capacity than, than graphite. And that's the family of intermetallics. Those are silicon, silicon graphite composite materials, etc. That can be a breakthrough in uh, battery development. So what is uh, the meaning of all that? We try to make, together with our customers, better batteries, uh, lighter, smaller, higher gravimetric density, higher volumetric density, and uh, I honestly believe personally that that doubling of capacity in the next three, four, five years will be uh, possible. Well, that's the technical part, in short. And that is a little bit uh, yeah, <laughs> a good direction for autonomy, for range, uh, etc. But there is also the cost factor. This is in dollars per kilowatt hour, but the same uh, targets exist in euro per kilowatt hour. The target is at roughly $250 per kilowatt hour for the battery system. Where are we today? Around $700, $800 per kilowatt hour. 
What does that mean in an electric car with a capacity of, let's say, 25 kilowatt hour? You have a fortune for that. This is 15,000, 20,000 easily battery cost that you have on board. So the targets are at one third, roughly around 200 euro to 50 dollar per kilowatt hour. This is a big jump uh, to come down to the 250 level and not impossible, uh, realistic. One can work on the dollar value and that means cheaper materials, uh, no cobalt anymore, cheaper iron phosphate, nickel based materials. That's one thing, and that is currently done. Second, when can uh, yeah, economies of scale will be improved? Uh, there is not yet a fully automated production in place for automotive batteries, but it is for portable electronics, for instance. So economies of scale are expected and increased yields. The other thing is the kilowatt hour, the energy contents, and that's a little bit in line with, uh, with, with what I explained before. There is improvement to be expected with higher energy density materials, with higher voltages, and by working on more smart, intelligent battery design. So, uh, cathode materials, materials in group, uh, represent roughly 80% of the battery cost. Cathode materials represent about 33%, one third of that. So we know that we can do a lot on the cathode side. Other people do uh, for the other materials. Solvay, for instance, is in binders, works on improved binders. So we believe, honestly, that we will reach that uh, level of 250 in the next years to come. That's two. My point to finish. Uh, all battery development and battery usage, commercial usage, also depends on the existence of recycling. Uh, in LCA and in automotive, recycling is a key aspect and uh, this is also secure. We, with our company, have built the first uh, industrial plant for battery recycling and there is also, from that side, So this concludes the first part of the panel debate. Now we have a good uh, 20 minutes for questions and uh, I saw a lot of uh, faces uh, during some of the presentations. So if Emma, you want to say something because uh, you reacted uh, quite uh, interesting to some of the statements of Eric. Um, f my first remark was about uh, your presentation. Uh, on um, the, the USP's the unique selling point and I mean for a uh, car manufacturer today CO2 reduction is one of selling points it's not our, uh, when we calculate for EVs we do it well to wheel so it depends on from uh, where the energy is coming if it comes from um, coal for sure, it's not CO2 free uh, in the end. But if it comes from renew renewables and from nuclear, as it is in France, for example, you can see that it is CO2 free. But still, it's not uh, what the car manufacturer are uh, are using to sell their car, their cars. That's wha the first thing. Um, the second one was about uh, countries that uh, are expecting uh, the market to be 100%. Uh, in my opinion, I don't uh, know those countries personally. And I give one figure which is not French, which is Renault sales. It's one figure about 2020, 10%. We expect and we hope that. 10% of our sales are EVs or PHEVs. It is not very much, but still, if we reach this target, it could be a good success. Uh, 
react on that? Well, it's yeah. some of my comments were related to you know what car manufacturers say is um, one thing. I don't know how far far it carries through to the people. But what government officials like the prime minister or the the, the, the uh, yeah how do you call it? minister president of Flanders for instance says on TV when he says something it carries a lot more and uh, um, all you hear is about CO2 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 uh, which is just the wrong emphasis and you pointed it out with your electric <coughs> vehicles uh, you should really focus and like I said before when it comes down to making choices um, the political parties don't carry it at least it's very vague nothing concrete and uh, if it, it, electric vehicles is very concrete you want to sell those uh, they you need to be in in the in the on the roads and um, at least in in what's coming up now in Belgium it's not there. And what, for mo what I can say in French is the same. The more involvement uh, from the government. Uh, for example, when uh, we began uh, manufacturing cars, we expected much more charging point. We expected much more parkings, um, uh, putting uh, these wall boxes, these simple ones, and they are not there. So it's a break for us. It's breaking our efforts. That's I agree with you. Mm. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. But the question remains: Is how much weight do you carry as car manufacturers? That's why my last statement was: uh, Make allies. Uh, um, if you get uh, um, with natural gas. Um, Gas de France is a very powerful company in in France. Uh, Fluxis is a very powerful company in uh, in Belgium. Um, they carry a lot more weight. You achieve the same goal, and maybe together you will increase your market share. Um, Yeah, no, just one thing. Uh, CO2 is uh, uh, something which is on the political high-level agenda simply because of Kyoto, simply because of the fact that there are engagements on this. For the car industry, I, I have here the next version of the, uh, let's say, CO2 uh, legislation. Uh, they will have 95 grams average fleet average to to match and uh, uh, this is already hinting at in 2014 looking at the next stages for 2025 uh, and 2030 and at some point i mean 95 it can be done with conventional engines or large part uh, with that uh, maybe phevs or uh, hybrids but uh, the, uh, in the longer term at some point uh, I the numbers will be such that uh, with the conventional engine you cannot uh, you will have to have a large part of uh, electric in the mix and even natural gas even though i am uh, supportive of natural gas it's it's not getting there uh, unless you have uh, such a big quantity of renewable natural gas and that's the question you say breakthroughs are are, are coming let's let's wait for the time being uh, the the fraction of uh, of uh, renewable natural gas is such that you can see this as a low co2 alternative and the conventional uh, natural gas maybe has some advantages but uh, depending on whom you talk to uh, someone is saying that uh, losses in, in, in Russia in the transport, I mean, they, they are emitting uh, free natural gas uh, at the pumping stations uh, in the air directly, uh, that that could kill the, a large part of the advantage. So, yes, it's, uh, it's a possible thing, but I don't think it's the final solution. So, let's say the, the policy that I mentioned is looking at 2050, and it's not all vehicles, it's all vehicles in the city centers. So the idea is that, uh, of course, for long range, I don't believe in a, in a 500 kilometers electric car at the moment. To me, a 500 kilometers electric car is an hydrogen car, in case. Because, uh, uh, the, you know, what is the, the merit of carrying enough battery to do 500 kilometers? All the time when you do 50 kilometers uh, uh, on average uh, by day, first. Second, 
Uh, yes, if it's modular, as you, some, as you mentioned, if you can uh, swap the battery and, and, and put something more, it's another story. Or if you can buy a, a, a small battery and then for a long trip put, put a, a bigger battery or something like this, but it's not there yet. So it's, uh, it's something we are just talking at the beginning, so I, I'm not so, uh, let's say, uh, trying to guess uh, uh, the future, because it's difficult with all the marketing problems that the students uh, highlighted. But uh, for sure, uh, in the very long term, there must be some form of electric, which, as I say, I consider hydrogen as electric. So uh, that might be the long range solution, not 500 kilometers battery. Okay, any, just, any more that has uh, urgent questions for this? Okay. <laughs> Um, I, I'm not uh, sharing completely um, what uh, Professor van den Bulk said because if I'm here it's because I believe in the IPCC uh, climate change problems and we have to have a very broad view about what is happening today. And there is a blinding effect. Thank you Maurice, especially for the safety. I don't know if you heard about the taxi that exploded in Shenzhen two days ago because it was hit by another car, so I think that is quite relevant. Now, 120 years ago in New York there was a conference on mobility and the delegates ran away of the conference in despair because at the time the main mean of mobility were horses and they projected that thanks to the economic growth uh, New York would be covered by six meters of horse manure in, uh, in a matter of uh, 30 to 40 years. And then some, an invention came along, the internal combustion engine that changed that paradigm. So I'm happy to invite Eric van den Bulk, that is an expert of combustion, to say a few words about uh, that technology still. Thank you. I don't think this works. Uh, I'm sorry? It's for recording, for recording the videos. Not oh, okay, yeah. Okay, um, well, the selected measures that I will uh, talk about um, are just a perception of what I experience as a mechanical engineer in uh, energy related technologies hmm, uh, of my environment. And uh, this recently came out. Hmm, um, that uh, <coughs> the motivations that uh, people have for cars, it was in the United States. Thank you, Maurice, especially for the safety. I don't know if you heard about the taxi that exploded in Shenzhen two days ago because it was hit by another car, so I think that is quite relevant. Now, 120 years ago in New York, there was a 